to the atheist watching this telecast, if our belief in God offends you, move. And I went to the website and it says, here's why yeah. he says they do it at Christmas. They do it at Christmas, Bill, yes. because atheists feel alone during Christmas because everybody else is religious atheists and together. Feel alone. Yeah, right. How many tens and tens of millions of people have been killed and butchered by atheists? Talk about that. I believe that unless someone has that religious moral core, that they're not like me. And my concern would be that an atheist would act on his or her belief. If you can't, if you don't believe in something supernatural, how can you imagine that you yourself have supernatural abilities enough to survive? No, I just believe if you don't believe in God, then where's your moral barometer? Um, basically, the atheists are just stupid because what all they're doing is making people angry. Brian, I think you're preying on young people and in the process you're turning them into very angry young people. Why are you doing this? Compared to the crimes of atheist regimes, which occurred not in ancient times, but in our lifetime, in the last century. If you're an atheist, you're basing your goodness and morality on what? Good you're you're one to three percent of the Trump. population. Why are you by, so noisy? All right, it's interesting. And you say? I wouldn't either. It's because there's more emotion with them. Don't you find that uh, discriminating atheists, against these people? Atheists are hypocrites. Some women should not go out with a man who doesn't believe in God. No, I mean, why would well, you? Well, Our country needs to stand tall. They're, they are destroyers. In a recent poll, 91% of Americans said, yes, we believe in a God or a universal spirit. Get over it. And if we can, to you help know, our neighbors. Think you live in poverty. I, I really think you live in poverty because if you think that this world, your life is just preparing with candles and batteries and has no life outside your immediate physical self, I think you're missing something. I was born in USSR and I was six when USSR collapsed. But, you know, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I was raised an atheist. I was raised non-religious. It's not really forced on you so much and that here it's it really is a big deal that you know I, I I've never been Christian but I feel more not necessarily afraid but it's not as easy for me to explicitly state my lack of belief. You don't need a belief in a deity or a belief in salvation or a belief in the afterlife to give you meaning and happiness. In fact, the idea of our own mortality gives a tremendous amount of color. My grandmother is the nicest person that I know. She is the most selfless, um, giving person, and she's an atheist. I knew that either one of them's wrong, despite how intelligent and how uh, confident they were, or both of them are wrong. And so, at that point, I knew that it would take more than a human to convince me otherwise. I think we should take life seriously. And to take life really seriously means to taking our beliefs seriously, making our, taking our ethics seriously, taking our life purposes seriously. I laid in the bed the night before, very aware of the rejection that was coming. And I sobbed with the same intensity as I did the night that I found out one of my dearest cousins, who was like a brother to me, we started off in the ministry together, when I found out he had been killed by a drunk driver. This is the world of our focus. It's why you'll find that so many uh, atheists and humanists uh, are so passionate about the environment, about human welfare, about civil rights, about animal rights about leaving this world, which we do not believe that somebody's gonna come down and end it and that there will be a savior. We believe that we have a personal responsibility for what's going on in the world, for our fellow man, and that this gives us a tremendous drive and strength to make every day more important. To think that I've now reversed the feelings that my grandmother had when she saw me in the pulpit the first time and how proud she was of me. To think that I have now intentionally allowed our relationship to go through this type of de-evolution, for, for it to 
literally become strained at the end of her life. If there's any regret that I have, it's that all of this had to happen while she was still here to see it. But that's how important being real actually is. I look at the world today and, and people say it doesn't, it takes away the awe and wonder. How can you look around here and not find awe and wonder in nature? More important, we're not apart from it. Some very good people with the best of intentions and the best of capabilities as, as well uh, to promote the idea of uh, human brotherhood and sisterhood. And that if through the course of our lives we we leave the world better than when we came into it, then what is better than that?